I would like to start with my uh, most confident forecast for the next eight years. I confidently forecast that over the next year, eight years, many American children will be given the name Donald. <laughs> Some of them may even be boys. <laughs> um, this morning I want to talk about the uh, uh, again about the piece that I put on, out on Friday, which is the, um, uh, the economic program of candidate Trump. Uh, but I want to put that together with what I think is happening in the year leading up to when that uh, program is enacted. And also the implications of the um, inspirational um, or the aspirational, rather, um, acceptance speech that Donald Trump gave uh, last night. Um, next year was going to be pretty good anyway. We know this because uh, there's a significant recovery in operating earnings per share uh, that we can see in market forecasts, and we can see that uh, in the area of uh, consumer discretionary, uh, because uh, uh, the US is at full employment and people are making more money. Information technology, because that's been strong for the last six years anyway, uh, and also healthcare. Uh, but the, uh, the program uh, that was part of uh, uh, President-elect Trump's, sorry, um, I have difficulty saying that, um, uh, program um, is really the program for the fiscal budget of 2018. Now, what's happened in the election is that the Republican Party has a large majority in the House of Representatives, which puts up the money bills. Uh, it also has a majority in the Senate, which passes the money bills. And, of course, uh, it has the signature in the White House, which signs off on the money bills. So what we know is that the program put forward for fiscal 2018 is going to be passed. Uh, it is quite revolutionary. The major issue is that, the major effect, is it cuts US corporate tax rates from 35% uh, to 15%. The Federal Reserve provides uh, every year an updated estimate on the effective tax rate in the US economy. Uh, that is the effective tax rate after all um, corporate tax deductions. And the effective uh, corporate, because there are so many corporate tax deductions which have been negotiated uh, by lobby groups with the Congress uh, over the years, uh, the effective tax rate corporate tax rate in the United States is, is only 18 per cent. But crucially, what the legislation associated with financial year 2018 does, it abolishes almost every one, every last one of those corporate tax deductions. And it uses the savings from doing that to cut the corporate tax rate from 18 per cent to 15 per cent. So, uh, as I said, uh, on, um, on Monday on Switzer, that means that the largest economy in the world now effectively has the same tax rate as Ireland. And that's just entirely revolutionary in terms of what that is going to do to develop world economies and competition on tax rates in, uh, in developed uh, world economies. Now, there is an additional spending program associated with fiscal 18. Uh, and considerable part of it is uh, increased military spending. Uh, I've outlined it in the piece. Importantly, what you've got to understand about military spending in the United States is military spending is inherently technology intensive. So that means more contracts for the technology area and more research uh, budget for the technology area. So you're going to have a, a boost to the technology sector because you have an increase in military spending, uh, and that's important to understand. But what you get, if you get, when you get this cut in the corporate tax rate, is you get a significant increase in 18 for that reason alone in after-tax corporate earnings of US corporations, 
and that in turn generates a higher level of private fixed capital investment in the US economy, and that generates a surge in employment in the US economy, and that's really important uh, because, uh, as Mike Pence uh, noted in his introduction uh, last night to Donald Trump, the problem, um, I mean, how these guys really won the election is there's a whole lot of Rust Belt states which have been left behind, which previously to last night had voted Democrat for the last uh, two generations, which for the first time uh, uh, voted, voted Republican last night. And that's how they won the, uh, Donald Trump actually won the election. So they're going to deliver to those people by providing more private investment and more employment uh, uh, in the US economy. Um, in addition to that, there was an aspirational speech last night, and it was about infrastructure. Now, a lot of that spending is going to, is really an aspirational speech about the next eight years rather than the fiscal budget of 2018. In the fiscal budget of 2018, there's up to $20 billion on infrastructure, but what was being talked about last night was a long-term program. Some of those things will take six or eight years to actually do in terms of freeway development or rejuvenation of uh, major cities. I imagine many of those will be in Rust Belt states. Um, uh, and that is an entirely different thing and is, a, and is an additional thing to the fiscal program of 18. Uh, my own view on that is that because uh, what's going to happen in 18 is almost cor corporate tax deductions are going to be wiped out, then there is going to be an appetite for tax deductible corporate income. In the United States, municipal bonds are tax deductible. Now, what that means is municipal bonds get a federal government subsidy uh, uh, in, uh, in holding for people who hold municipal bonds. So that's an inherent federal government subsidy uh, to municipal projects. So I think that uh, major funding projects, uh, uh, projects, including municipal bonds, will be part of this city rejuvenation program, particularly uh, in the Rust Belt states. But that program has yet to be announced. What we do know is in 18 we are going to have a revolutionary program of tax cuts and that is going to generate a considerable surge in after-tax corporate income that's going to put upward pressure on uh, US stock prices. It will also put upward pressure on Australian stock prices.